X-Tools sent us the 20 watt D1 Pro diode laser to put together and give a try. We work on CO2 lasers and get asked regularly our thoughts on diodes as a more affordable entry point to laser cutting. The large Laguna laser cutter you see regularly in our content retails for over $10,000. So the ticket price of one to 2,000 on the most souped up diode is quite appealing. Quick start guide. Right, at quick glance, this is probably the most detailed instruction book I've ever had come with a machine. And I say that in a good way. It looks like putting together Legos or something. <laughs> Step one. No scissors are included in the pack. Oh. Oh, sh Bada bing. All right. Crushed it. Now it looks like we just need to slide it all together. And then we started following along and doing what it said. Between the two of us, this took about eh, 15 minutes to get together from start to finish. I don't know if it would have taken more or less time had it been just one of us, but it was a really easy assembly process. It did break it down into really easy steps. This then slides down and mounts that to the motor. Cool. Congratulations! On. Is it on? Yeah. Are you ready? Are you turned on? What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. All right, at this point, the uh, machine is set up. The firmware has been updated. It was super easy. Just downloaded their software and it just like did it. And now all that's left is we have the air assist add-on that I'm just gonna hook up and then we're ready to start cutting, I think. Air Assist is a really simple add-on that'll dramatically improve the quality of cuts you're getting on any laser. And while I got that set up, Brooke put together a simple coaster design using the X-Tool software. It's also compatible with Lightburn, but we wanted to be sure to give the X-Tools program a shot too. And it was really intuitive. We'll probably end up using this one with Lightburn because that's what we use for everything else, but this program gets a thumbs up from us as well. First impression is that the engraved quality and speed is more or less identical to what you can get on a CO2 laser. Pretty impressive for the price difference. However, there isn't any air ventilation, which is a big consideration. Cuts were quite a bit slower than what can be accomplished on the CO2 lasers. This is a thin piece of cork and you can see that one pass didn't quite cut all the way through. Since I picked it up and moved it around, I couldn't really figure out a great way to ensure that I'd re-zero it in the exact spot, so I just went with what I had and couldn't add a pass. Here's the result, it's definitely salvageable. We were overall really impressed with the results we got on the cork, but in the name of really giving this a fair test, we wanted to cut the same design out of walnut, a much harder material, just to see how the two compared. The lack of ventilation was unideal for the cork, but became a real problem on the walnut. X-Tools offers a hood, which I'd say is definitely well worth getting, or have some other ventilation solution in mind.
And also, we very quickly ran into an issue with the flame sensor. The engrave went okay, but when the diode set to start burning all the way through the walnut, it kept making it about three quarters of an inch before a loud alarm went off and the machine just stopped. There was no flame in sight, so this got pretty frustrating after a bit. Safety sensors are a great thing, however, in this case, it didn't just pause the job, it completely terminated it, which made a smooth workflow impossible, combined with the difficulty in relining up I mentioned earlier. In my opinion, I'm very comfortable just turning the sensor off and not having it. Now, that being said, safety is always a concern when running any laser cutter. You should always sit and watch lasers for the duration of the job you're running, no matter what. That way you can immediately react to any issues in the case of a fire. Flame sensor or not. Final thoughts. Uh, <laughs> um, I like it. I did. I liked it more than I thought I was going to like it. I don't think it's a bad alternative at all to a CO2 laser. It's different. Yeah. Um, I looked it up last night and the big EX laser is now $13,000. Okay. Which so just... this comes in at uh, less than 10% okay. of the cost. Okay. Because it's one of those things where, where is the CO2 laser better? Yes, but is everyone going to want to purchase a CO2 laser for I the price? I don't think it's better. I think that no, I don't okay. think it's better. I think that it's just different. Okay. I think it's a little bit different. But I would say if you're a hobbyist or something, or if you really have been wanting to try laser cutting, and this is within your budget, I think it's a great option. Yeah, and the, the 20 watt allows you to do some like minor production type work and things like that without needing to um, you know, really worry about it. It has enough speed that you can move quite a few things through it in a day yeah and the engrave was great the engrave was no different yeah. at all and, and we have a link that we're going to put down below and we'll link all of the components that we recommend getting to start yeah um so you can put together a complete set and um you know i, I think this is going to open up a lot of doors for a lot of people i think so too and the ultimate testament to us liking it is that we cleared out a spot for it so it can have a permanent home in the makerspace. And we don't do that for everything, so. So that's a big deal. It's a big deal. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching. Bye.